so there is. Okay, I can't speak. Okay, so we'll, we'll keep on <clears throat> follow up on the internet. Okay, well, okay, uh, the recording has started, so people, uh, welcome to the, what's today's date? The June 20th OSC Developers Meeting. I'm here in, uh, in a secret micro factory of my house here so uh, this is B3D here I've been printing parts like for example uh, that's some of the carriage pieces that we have there for the 3D printer uh, pretty much been running the printer 24-7 and uh, just shaking it down finally got it fully calibrated uh, auto bed leveling is working excellent. There was a lot of issues with that because the code is not documented. I was actually using a mesh bed leveling routine which appears to have bugs and I could not figure it out. I was doing air prints but every time it would just be off by one or two millimeters. Following a very uneven bed because I, I tested it like with an uneven bed for example. But it would just come closer by like one or two millimeters to the bed at places which is totally not acceptable the layers are one-third of a millimeter tall they're 0.38 millimeters tall for each layer so that was completely unacceptable just struggling with that and then figured out it's it must have been some bug in the routine but the three point where it probes three points one two and three to establish a flat surface uh, that worked well um, the latest I understand regarding bed leveling is that the marlin that works it, it supports only a slant. It doesn't support the fact that a bed might actually be curved, so it only converts that to like one plane at some angle. Uh, so there's not that in Marlin that I, that I know of. Apparently there's other firmware that allows you to do actual profiles of a bed. If the bed you know, has some kind of a wave, it actually will trace the whole wave and accommodate for that, as opposed to just for a tilt. Um, so that's that's where that is. Moving on here, um, I want to just review a couple of the, the main things that are happening. I don't have a meeting uh, agenda really prepared for today since since actually one of the things that's happening right now is we, we've got the build of the C D3D CNC circuit mill. Um, I can actually upload a picture of that <clears throat> real quick to the to the Facebook page so you can you can look at it but we're using the identical parts as you might have seen for let me just put a link to the D3D CNC circuit mill page D3D CNC circuit mill this is what we're building right now we're actually uh, we got the frame already together um, if you look at the the CAD is, is shown here, uh, but that's a D3D CNC circuit mill currently being built. Shane is here for two weeks. What we're doing is building and testing the CNC circuit mill based on the D3D platform. And then we're also installing a power monitoring system for the Seed Eco Home, meaning all the different loads from, it's an off-grid house. So it's got DC loads at 24 volts. It's got AC through an inverter. We're pretty much measuring all the different loads so that we can use, basically devise a power strategy for that if, if we're completely off grid with a minimal battery bank. means that we run just about all the loads during the daytime and uh, we shut off certain things. Some things go on only when the sun is on, they're direct DC, like a bunch of pumps or fans, aerators say for the aquapana greenhouse other loads like pumping water from the pond and stuff because it's all off grid on the water and electricity and so forth so full power monitoring open source system for that Shane uh, he's from Michigan Tech University he's here right now with he's from Dr. Joshua Pierce's group the open source sustainable Te sustainability technology lab so that's really good we're gonna get that installed uh, here as far as uh, more activity, the CNC torch table has been started. There's great progress from uh, from Oliver regarding the height control. We, we just devised a manual height control system. You can look on his log 
as far as what's happening there and uh, as far as just one one major other piece of nice news is that um, so so in the recruiting process we've run into a lot of people from Saudi Arabia one one particular developer who's pretty much organizing a whole crew from the Middle East North Africa area his name is Ahab and we're talking actually about a big big workshop in Saudi Arabia for December um, if you look at the 3d printer critical path on the wiki uh, go to the critical path page you see that there's a big event slated for a hundred builds of the 3d printer in a single day well people it looks like right now that's gonna be Saudi Arabia uh, they're very interested they're very much aligned uh, as far as the the grassroots economics creation and enterprise startup so we're pretty much on the same wavelength of distributive enterprise uh, quite surprising to see that uh, uh, maybe like the this stuff is not happening in America I'm finding it in America a lot of people are kind of uh, spoiled in some way um, this this local economy thing is not people are not as hungry as maybe some people some places that need it war zones or developing countries or other places where there's a like a more more of a consciousness regarding <clears throat> grassroots economic creation but it looks like we're going to be going to Saudi Arabia uh, and, and the plan is actually quite interesting we are planning a hundred day hundred printer 3d printer build which is most crazy that's going to be the biggest event we will ever have run and right after that doing work uh, three-day build of the tractor so the next iteration of the tractor which is like version 8 and the thing is we're developing a whole development team uh, a whole crew of people at least 12 um, that are going to be working on a tractor for that event so it's going to be a great big push to get a really good product out there as currently it's we've done so many of the prototypes and working out element after element in that whole development process so that's going to be pretty impressive to see that so we're, we're looking forward to a very crazy event in december and before that um we do want to build the torch table here so that the assumption is for the build in august august 25th of the brick press at factory farm we're using our own cnc torch table absolutely no question about it uh, Oliver has already produced the manual height controller. It's basically a knob on an Arduino that you turn to, to shift the height of the torch up and down to follow the metal closely. So an operator will, will be there by the CNC torch table and just adjust slightly as they see the torch moving back and forth. Um, it's quite manageable. The cutting of half inch steel happens at about 20 inches per minute. So an operator could basically keep adjusting that. So have the full CNC capacity with manual adjust that's if we don't get the automatic height control sensor worked out by August 25th and that means really a month before August 25th because we got to cut all the parts about a month before to make sure that uh, we don't have any part sourcing issues okay so that's that's the main updates as far as the people on uh, on the team here I don't have an agenda for today and I'm gonna ask Joseph if you're available uh, can you go to the D3D meeting page and actually s copy and paste the, the next meeting agenda? I didn't prepare one today. Uh, we had Shane here. We're working on a CNC circuit mill as well as we were as was working on some electricity outage at the CD home. Just a fuse. Uh, Got to fix that. But uh, don't have an agenda. So Joseph, if you're available on a computer, can you can you paste today's agenda? Just start and copy and paste new document and make it happen for for today. Um, if you can. can. Joseph, can you do that or you're not available to um, on a computer? We'll keep going. Uh, OK, yeah, so Joseph, keep doing that. Um, as far as uh, checking in on a 3D printer, as I said, it's, it's nice and sweet here, the 3D prints. Let me just show you as an example of a part of what it looks like. I'm going to take it right off the print bed. So here's an example of a nice, uh, nice part that's just printed. 
So I've been printing so you can see how nice and flat it is. It's got the, you know, it's got the raft on it that I used. But yeah, this is very nice. I mean, all auto level. So I'm basically hidden print. And this is what comes out. I'm using a little raft. You can see that little, little boundary. You can actually break that off. Um, I'm using a raft to print it, but yeah, very sweet to see it just just working after working out the the bugs and marlin. But yeah, so that's a that's a carriage part for the universal axis. Um, very cool. Uh, so can we check in maybe with who's online here as far as um, tasks? I've been working with. Uh, as a good example of of what the construction set can do, so so will uh, one of our new developers last week has designed a full what you see on a CNC circuit mill page, D three D CNC circuit mill. We basically all we needed to do to to generate that CAD design was to create a spindle, uh, the the motor holder and the rest of it was all the same parts from D3D. So in one day we did the spindle, it took like an hour or two, and then the second day Will took off and he designed the whole frame and everything fitted together, worked out the geometry, and now we know that we have like a you know, five by six inch CNC milling area uh, for that machine. Uh, really great, I mean, if you had to do a full design from scratch, I mean, it would take you like a month or so to work every detail out, but because we already have the axes and the frame, um, it becomes really quick, literally turning those prototyping cycles from weeks to days, uh, from like a month to two days. That's great. Um, along those lines, so we have right now we have Israel working on a one inch axes with one inch rods for the CNC torch table. So basically we went through, so if you go to the D3D CNC torch table page. I'll paste that in. That's the specification for that. This machine is much larger. It is 5 by 10 feet, about 2 by 3 meters. So that's much larger, and uh, we're going to make it work. And that design is expected to, to occur once again a few days. Uh, whereas before, you know, the design is a month, a few days, beautiful. And what's coming up is we're going to do the next, not yet, but maybe like in a couple of weeks, few weeks, three, four weeks, uh, the super heavy duty version, meaning the much larger printed pieces are going to be, you know, much bigger to accept two inch rods. And that makes for heavy-duty CNC machining. So that's coming up. Um, so we have the agenda as uh, Joseph piped in. We can we can use that for today. But I want to check in with everybody. Maybe um, so. Maybe Io. Do you have any updates as far as what you've been up to? Let's see what Io log might have. If you are speaking, we're not hearing you. And peace, simple. Uh, Io, can you speak or we can't hear you if you are? Yeah, okay. It's all right. So you've been working on some of the end piece work. Let's see what we got there.
Right. So, I also I see you're working on some of the the files simplification. Um, yeah. Right. So the main thing regard which is relevant to IO's work. Uh, so, so I see you working on the cable chain parts for moving on with respect to the low cost version of the 3D printer. The problem statement is as such. So, so now we've got the 3D printer working. I'm going to be building uh, probably within this week while Shane is here working on a CNC circuit mill probably get this little print army up to six printers using the metal frames that are 13 inch so the the 13 inch version is uh, actually Israel pretty much designed that um, pretty thoroughly we can use that as our design to build out a bunch of the 13 inch machines as opposed to the 16 inch and the geometry is slightly different to accommodate for different things and that's why you need the CAD so that you have a good picture of what you're working from now to get an even lower cost version the the frame is the most you can say the most advanced part because right now we're getting it cnc cut so the the other way to do it is using pvc corners and pvc pipe to do a, a very simple version and uh, i was hoping we might have that like we talked about it last week um, with io but um can we maybe prioritize that as the number one thing to do i mean it's not not a lot of it's just getting uh, XYZ corners happening. Maybe maybe we can write that down. That's 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 an important part. So XYZ corners in, into which you can fit actual PVC pipe. That's the simplest ever way you can make the frame um, outside of using wood. Now wood, you can do a frame out of wood. You can cut it yourself with a saw, but wood tends to rot. So uh, at a, in a place like Factory Farm, if you don't protect the wood, it's going to rot. <laughs> so mushrooms are going to eat your printer pretty soon. That's why PVC is actually a very good idea to to work with PVC as that doesn't degrade over time. So you pretty much have a lifetime design frame. And the way you mount the axes is simply by gluing the magnets to that and then attaching the frames to that if you want to have the magnetically attached frame. So... Um, Let's actually write a couple of notes about that because that's a way that all of us, I mean, right now I'm starting to get the parts printed. So I pretty much want to offer to everybody on the team, like if you need parts, uh, I think we can get them printed for you, but we need the design of the, the frame so that we can do a very low cost accessible frame. It's, it, it would be relatively inexpensive if, if we can print out the 3D printed corner pieces and just get you know off the shelf from a store um, you can get you know a stick of 10 feet of PVC for like two dollars two or three dollars or something so therefore the the frame would be extremely inexpensive but we really need to get the the complete design and the 3d print files for that not a big deal but I don't know if IO you can maybe focus on that aspect but as far as so let me go into the uh, let me share my screen here so, to explain what I'm talking about just a little bit more. Um, let me share the screen. Maybe we can spend just a little bit of time explaining the, the low-cost 3D printer option because that's, that's very important. So I'm going to do an additional slide, duplicate the slide here in a development teamwork allocation. Um, Let's strip this all down here to the let's talk about the simplified frame. So think about it this way, if you have a corner, so this is how, how a corner piece would look, an XYZ corner, essentially, this would be a 3D printed piece, 
uh, a corner, an XYZ 3D printed piece. Now these pieces also come in from the store, like Menards has this also. Uh, I've seen it in the United States. Menards has 3D, these, uh, not 3D printed, I mean extruded corner brackets, but they're actually on special order. Uh, so you can't really walk into a store and get it. So th these are the, this is the 3D printed XYZ corner piece. So a frame is six of these pieces. So I'm going to drop my little frame here. You know, so there's that. Um, yeah, I mean, and these are not drawn to, to scale. But basically what, what we want to do is draw this up in full detail so we get the correct lengths. And then you can get the correct lengths of the, the PVC pipe. But um, six of these, so that's enough right there. Two, four, six, no, eight. Sorry, eight. Then you have, um, so that's what a frame would look like. Now, now if you connect the, connect the dots or connect the lines, you've got, you know, the front part of the frame, like right here. I'll make that a fat line. And then you have like the back of the frame. So basically all these pieces make up a frame. And then, so kind of like that is what it looks like. Um, but this is, a, we got to get that. So um, let's do this. Um, yeah, so that's how it looks. <clears throat> I'm going to get rid of that piece so it's a little more transparent. But that's your cube. That's the simplest way to do it. All out of PVC. Um, very inexpensive. So make frame from PVC. PVC tube. I would say three quarter inch. I think would probably do it. And then corners, eight corners, are 3D printed, and then you fit in the entire axis system. Mm -hmm. And that's it. That's, that's a simplified frame. And with that, once we fit all the axes and, and then electronics, we have a working 3D printer. And um, it will be interesting to build one of these. Um, the next step, next steps on this, operationally speaking, so step number one: generate a 3D printed corner, corner, corner piece. And then determine the lengths of the. Well, basically, the do design in FreeCAD uh, using our, of course, the simplified axis, uh, the very lightweight 65K axes, simplified axis. So that's on a that's all on a D3D part library page, wiki page there. From that, you actually get the actual lengths, lengths of PVC, and the detail on this, on these uh, corner pieces, could be that you would have the only detail that's worth noting is you might want to have like a little hole in there on each corner, possibly one or two, and I haven't really thought about that how it would look like where you can actually screw in 
a bolt or a little screw such that you hold the PVC to it. One way to do it is PVC glue. However, um, that does not work with PLA. It would work with ABS, but ABS tends to warp a lot. So um, if these corners are any sizable, I would, I think PLA is pretty good. Um, and then we can have the screw, so screw, screw holes. Um, let's call those screw holes. It could be anything, like a tiny little uh, one inch, you know, one inch long or something, short screw. So a hole for a short screw. And then therefore you're catching each of the, the frame members so they don't slide in and out. Yeah, uh, that's basically it as far as the overall design. Um, so let's see, Io, would you have time to do this or maybe we can get, uh, how, how's your time or effort on this? Would you be able to generate those corner pieces? Cause I know you've, you've been working on this a little bit. Um, yeah, six foot angle iron. Joseph is saying that junk bed frames. Yes. But then you'd need to do a little bit of welding. Yeah. Um, so Io, is that pretty clear to you as far as what exactly this corner file would entail so we can generate it? Because I mean, if you can generate it, um, I will 3D print it. So this is our 3D printer here. Uh, I can get that 3D printed. This is now, now our own. Um, I can print that and I can print that for everybody on a team if people want to do a, a super low cost frame. I mean, I can, I can offer that. Um, to our peeps so so you guys can I mean I really want you all to, to get that printer get your hands on that printer as soon as, as soon as possible so so we can do that and the um, only other specification that needs to be known so is for a three quarter inch PVC uh, so the specs for a three quarter inch PVC there's a very specific um, outer diameter that we need to be concerned with so that this corner piece fits around it snugly and we probably what we want to do in an actual 3d printed file is make it uh, make the entire diameter there one millimeter bigger um, so make the 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 corner piece inner diameter one millimeter larger than the PVC so that the PVC can fit in there. If you try to print it exactly the same size, it probably would not fit in. So you want to make that diameter about one millimeter bigger. Now the second thing is what are the specs for PVC? Clearly you go to the PVC page on the OSC wiki. <laughs> there it is. And the, it has a table of the standard PVC, um, let's see, where do we find that? PVC pipe dimensions only, schedule 40 and 80. Like, so this is PVC pipe on the wiki. We can click on this link right here. Right, so here are the corner pieces on the, that same page there. Um, so this is a table from Engineering Toolbox and it will tell you, for, for example, for three quarter inch nominal pipe size, which is what we're doing, that's schedule 40. Schedule 40 is the standard type of pipe you get at the store. So you read this off and for three quarter inch pipe, the outside diameter is actually 1.05 inches. So, uh, what is that? Inches or millimeters? So you got millimeters there. So, so three quarter inch is exactly 26.7 millimeters for the outer diameter of the PVC pipe. So therefore we make the actual hole in the, co in the corner piece one millimeter bigger, so 27.7 millimeters. Um, so that's 27.7 millimeters. And I'm gonna just link to that page uh, here, specs, specs for PVC page. I would say that uh, three quarter inch is just about the right thing we wanna do, uh, simply because it's the outer diameter, there's about one inch. 
And that's pretty good for a frame that's, it's gonna be very lightweight, so I can actually tell you from experience, when the frames are moving around rapidly, you will shake the printer, it might like come off the table. Uh, so what you would do for that, you probably have to attach the PVC, like the bottom, the bottom of the PVC will probably have to be attached to whatever table you're sitting on because I can tell you a PVC frame like that is going to be very very light it's not going to be like the metal and I can tell you that the the 16 inch D3D here when you go really fast with the printing it shakes the whole machine pretty well um, there's a lot of inertia in the, in the axes moving around uh, simply because they're reversing direction rapidly every so often uh, so that's that's the pretty much the the design and um, if you go back to this, the actual corner piece, like on a wiki page, is uh, like these corners right here. They have very nice ones, nice picture here. Uh, I'll just take a little screenshot of that. But this one, this triple corner, is what we want. We don't want these ones. That's, that could be for other applications, but this triple corner right here, uh, if I copy and paste that, would be what we would like so that's that's the thing in in real life um, yeah so that's that uh, make a CAD file of this and get the actual lengths of the PVC pipe and after that get actual uh, rod lengths that you need for the the universal axis and then otherwise all the 3D printer pieces are exactly the same as what we already have in uh, an entire construction set. So, um, so that's, that's that. Once you got all those, the parts designed, lengths, you know, find out what lengths you need, then you can start cutting, start building. So that's where we are in that. Excellent. Um, what else we got here? So, I'm pretty much, let's think, as far as the 3D printer work, that's pretty much what we have. I mean, the main, next main thing is to really look at organizing the next event. And um, we need to really put one on a, on a schedule as soon as we can. We've been talking about it for some time. We still need the website up, which, which Jose is working on. So, I'm meeting with him tomorrow on the progress on that. Um, so, that's that's basically it. But that's that's pretty much all I have for the on a 3D printer. The other part that we're aware of that's happening right now is Roberto is working on the procedure for language agnostic instructionals. How do you extract the isom nice isometric drawings um, from the CAD files in FreeCAD? I just want to peek at his log to see where, where that is. Um, but that's something like when we talk about really good instructionals for the future events we do want to get some people going on that um, and as I mentioned we're interviewing there's a whole bunch of people that are right now applying from the Middle East region there's about 14 people that I'm actually in the process of interviewing so we're actually gonna get a big spike of population within like two weeks or so uh, so we can allocate a few people to doing the full language agnostic instructions because the the real big thing that that's pretty much left over for any documentation on D3D right now is just like the last level of documentation the language agnostic instructionals very nice simple diagrams that you can have a printout during the build so that um, the workshop instructor the job for that person is very easy because people are very clear about all the instructions um, and as far as the latest progress, let's see. Um, oh wow! So do we want to watch this? What we have right now? Let's let's see what this is about so far. 
Uh, so we're working on a full... To create language agnostic instructionals, you need to extract nice-looking isometric snapshots of parts from FreeCAD. First, install an automated script, also known as a macro, for extracting isometric views. Download the ISOView macro. To install this macro in Ubuntu, go to the Files folder, View menu, Show hidden files, and drag the macro that you downloaded into the FreeCAD hmm. directory. You will then see the macro appear in the FreeCAD macro menu under Macros. You can edit the macro and you'll see that it is written in Python. Open a free Wow, so we've got a quite a solid part of that video already. That's great. That that looks pretty good. We've got the the artificial voice. That's all right. That's pretty cool. That's one way to do it. But yeah, that's a pretty nice tight video. Um, I guess there's uh, so that's probably like halfway or so through that video. Uh, but the idea is to get these nice, clear, and crisp um, isometric views that are then put into language agnostic instructionals. Um, and we can do that to have pretty much awesome exhaustive documentation that would go on our website um, the main website for the 3d printer so we're creating d3d.opensourceecology.org and moving forward with that the other good part is uh so we do actually have already just a last update on uh, infrastructure that's happening we have uh, michael outfield He's working on a back-end infrastructure. He's one of the things he's installing is the JITC video bridge. So we tried JITC to do the open source conferencing a few weeks ago. It wasn't working so well, so we switched back to Google Hangout. But we're, we should be having that in place within a few weeks so that we can actually use open source conferencing software that's going to be on our own server, you know, well documented, so also other people can we can help other people install that. But it would be a really nice addition to have the open source conferencing within our own capacity so that that's really nice and um, as we do that we'll put the the d3d.opensourceecology.org on the new server and keep going so yeah uh, Roberto was asking if the timing on that video is good for me it's it's good I I love it uh, it's for me it's not fast enough some people complain that that is too fast uh, for me it, it is good I actually, what I do typically is, whenever I see a video, I play it in two times the speed on, on YouTube, so that's okay, but uh, I would kind of be be judged by that it's comfortable for someone to understand. It's not, it doesn't feel rushed or anything like that, it's just powerful, packed information, sentence after sentence. I personally like it, maybe if other people can comment on that, we can provide feedback. Always we can do something like if, if it's going too fast, you can actually resave it slightly slower. So I think that's um, that's okay as long as the editing is proper, that you don't have dead space, then uh, I think that could work. Um, I, I like it personally myself, so I don't, I don't think it's too fast, but it depends on others. Okay, so that's, that's, that's about all I've got. So that's, that's in progress, that's great. Um, Roberto, uh, how much time do you think you will also need to finish the rest of the videos, uh, rest rest of the instructional? So we, we kind of know when to plan for getting more people on that. Uh, do you think you'll have it by by next week then, or? For tomorrow, that's great, awesome. So we're moving right along in that video. Um, and as I mentioned, once we get the large number of people we're interviewing, I think the, the two things we're gonna be working on, one is the 3D printer, and the second part is the starting on um, actual tractor work. So we'll do all the instructionals for the 3D printer. Uh, that's gonna be a nice team effort, and then we'll move right into the, the tractor design, which is something we, yeah, we'll have a pretty solid team to work on that, that'll be awesome, and then with Oliver's brand new CNC torch table design of the electronics will be in good shape. With that said, let's let's switch on to, uh, if we can maybe move on to, since I'm kind of out of juice for what's, what's happening with the 3D printer, uh, let's move on to the torch table. So maybe we can have uh, Oliver speak some wisdom on the technical developments. Can you do that? Yeah, Oliver, if you're speaking, we're not hearing you. Or I'm not hearing you. Uh, 
Uh, Oliver, yeah, we can't hear you. So if you are talking, you are clearly talking to yourself right now. <laughs> um, just re-log in. Okay, do that. Um, yeah, so if you look at, I'm going to start speaking for him. Oliver, once again, some stellar work. If you look at what he's done already, he's done this. <laughs> and he even put up a video on YouTube. He did this test axis. What he's doing is the, that is the ramps board. He's adding a much larger stepper driver so he can, so we can actually run a number of stepper can motors you? off a single one. Yes, we can. Why don't you come right in and oh. tell us about your progress? Um, yeah. Um, what I did is this uh, manual um, uh, controller thing and uh, it works fine. I finished it yesterday and um, yeah, I wrote a little uh, firmware on it. We, we were discussing discussing which firmware is uh, most appropriate and in this case I think it was easier to program it from the scratch. Yeah. And uh, uh, as you may have seen in the video, um, um, it's um, you can already control it with a rotary encoder. And the first thing I have to do for that is a bigger knob because it's a bit unhandy like this. I've just mounted it on a um, on a breadboard, a little breadboard, but um, this can be become a little bit better mounted and then with the knob then that will be handier. But however, so far uh, it works and was uh, okay to test it. And I think I have the um, TBA um, um, uh, wired um, that's the TD6600, um, um, not wired, but um, uh, configured that it is in uh, one of eight fraction micro stepping so far. And uh, with this, I can achieve uh, distance with one tick or one pulse uh, of about 25 microns. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I have. Um, I've simply let it run. I've marked the point on the axis and have let it go a thousand steps, and then it was exactly uh, 25 millimeters, which leads us to one micron at one one fraction eight uh, micro stepping. And um, the TB6600 seems to be able to do even uh, 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 one of 32 yeah. micro stepping. So. Uh, that would lead then to maybe about six six microns. I haven't yet tested it, but uh, um, I think probably it's not necessary this to do it so fine. But if it's it's needed, then it's, it's maybe possible. Yeah. And from the handling, if you turn the knob, you can feel very well each click points, and uh, maybe with a bigger wheel, it's. Uh, more comfortable and um, yeah I think uh, it's, it's a good way to start with and by the way the KY 040 uh, rotary encoder has also an additional line um, which is a simple switch knob so uh, maybe for, for later extensions one can do with, with switching it or touching it maybe if you have um, uh, reached a certain level which is fine and you want to fix it at one point or something like that so this, this offers however more uh, possibilities yeah yeah. Uh, well, yeah yeah that's excellent excellent work yeah. um, do we know that when you run a like the big stepper driver you can simply connect multiple stepper motors to that is that correct? The Honda Perfect. What the? Ah, yeah. You asked it. Yeah. I In parallel. I think that is possible. I haven't tested it yet with the TB6600, but I know from the RAM sport the Z axis is normally also driven from one stepper. I yeah. Think. So, yeah, exactly. Uh, total wattage is uh, divided into half, but then it works. And 
I think I had it also like this on my drill automat and uh, it works. Yeah, no, that's great. That's um, that's yeah, really good. Um, yeah, in this, in this configuration, um, I have mounted the ramps on top, but even this is not not really necessary. Theoretically, you could simply plug in the things to an uh, Arduino Mega or the underlying Arduino Mega, and uh, uh, yeah, you, you have to. I did it here mainly with the ramps. It, it just cares for the for the power supply. Yeah. But, oh wow! So, yeah. so you can those pins that you're connecting to those are just the output pins to the stepper driver. So you don't even need the ramps board on top. Exactly. Oh wow. It is one step more working out which pins on the ramps board needed to which um, huh. uh, on the on the Arduino. I mean, it's a, it's a additional mapping. It's it's not it's not big big thing, but um, uh, I, I I take that as a as a as a proof uh, that uh, concept what what we had for the for the SMD part board thing that I say uh, I directly mounted on the uh, Arduino Nano in this case, or better, uh, mm -hmm. uh, the Nano on top of the board, uh, we will be probably on the right way that, that works well for yeah. an application like this. Yeah. For everyone else on the team, what's happening here in this, what I'm sharing on my screen, is you turn the knob and the axis moves left and right. So that's how we're going to control the torch on a CNC torch table as we're working out the automatic sensor for heights control on the torch table so an operator just moves the torch up and down very very slightly and of course you don't want to be doing that by hand because on a five by well why is this important um, you can stand on the side of the torch table and have this little knob that you turn as opposed to reaching over the table and trying to move the torch up and down through some other kind of mechanism this this gets you this pretty much that which the automatic controller will be doing except you're doing it with a little knob moving the torch up and down slightly to follow the metal at the right distance and the right distance means about about three to five three to six millimeters or so about eighth inch to to a quarter inch over the the metal so it's pretty easy to do that by eye and here we've just shown that okay we we uploaded some code to the arduino a very simple sketch that you can look at um, Oliver's log and then we can move use this knob to turn um, to basically move that platform up and down using our universal axis so so the what's gonna happen there is that's a simulation of our universal axis uh, we we will have the torch on the torch table mounted on one of our universal axes such that we can move it up and down um, using just this little simple knob so just one more question here um, for the code I mentioned, so so the little tricky part is, you know, we want to get people literate on, on coding the microcontrollers, and there's a, there's Arju Block, which is an open source visual programming interface for Arduino, meaning you can kind of like diagram out a program and it, and it writes out the code for you. Can we do that with your code, uh, as I emailed you about? Uh Theoretically, we can, but to be honest, I'm not a very big friend of things like that. This Arduino uh -huh. block thing and also uh, programs like Fritzing uh -huh. are, in my opinion, more uh, like toy stuff, yeah. which is good for um, uh, encourage beginners to get into the thing. But yeah. um, um, first thing is, I would I would see it as waste well, the time to do that. And uh, secondly, um, um, you will get into trouble. These things are good if you have very simple programs and simple systems. But if you go to more complex systems, then then you are lost with them. And that's. Uh, uh -huh. I think this is more, like I said, to encouraging people. But for encouraging people, it's it's not uh, only necessarily to do things like this. Who is really interested? Who that guy will find this way and there are other ways to tease, tease people to get into the open hardware 
uh, making stuff like, for example, the, the maker fairs, which are really good for the whole family. And this is a good way to get people into that. But uh, I would not waste too much effort on, on these things like fritzing and these Arduino blocks thing. That's my personal opinion. Uh -huh. You can see it different, of course. Yeah. You're such a party pooper on that one. All right. But uh, as, far, as far as the the capacity of a, a software like ArduBlock to do that logic, is that is that capable in the first place? Or, or it wouldn't even be capable of, you don't think, of uh, doing the actual program that you wrote? Um, I'm, I, I was not so much into this Arduino block. I've uh -huh. just uh, checked that and probably the structure is simple uh, enough. Uh, it's, it's, a, it's a small loop and within that loop he first uh, checks, um, checks uh, if there is a signal from the uh, uh, rotary encoder. Yeah. And next thing is it's doing the motor step and uh, it's maybe interesting just because this whole structure is so small and uh, then that makes it easier for timing. Uh, like it's it's sensing just one pulse from the rotor encoder encoder and then doing uh, yeah uh, what, not one step but uh, depending on which step with you have um, uh, um, set as as default values and it's doing a bunch of steps like that and then it starts over and again and you you don't run and timing problems because everything is fast enough and simple enough. Uh -huh. So for example, if you had an English major design the software for that <laughs> that uh, height controller manual version, do you think they could do it using a software like... A what? Or, an English? Yeah, an English, English major. <laughs> uh, could an English major design that software using ArduBlock, do you think? Or you don't have enough experience with it. What I'm saying, somebody who does not have experience with programming, would they would that be useful for them to actually, you know, say they were stranded on a desert island and they had to build at the CNC torch table, um, and that person happened to be an English major, could they do it with ArduBlock? I mean a person who's not skilled in uh, technical technical skills. <laughs> I'm, I'm not so deep into that uh, RDU block. Uh, I think it's a good uh, maxima to uh, construct uh, building plans like that. Everybody everywhere can do it and even on, a, on an island. Um, but um, I don't know whether uh, the RDU block is, is suited for it. Uh -huh. And on the other hand, I think the torch height controller is a more special uh, application which you need if you're building a torch table and that will be probably then your bigger problem uh, at the island yeah. uh-huh well not with our universal access system anyone can do it all right yes of course especially <laughs> Especially as soon as you implement that into FreeCAD, that there is a own workbench for, for using the parts. And yeah, absolutely. <laughs> which brings us to the next... We have a touch table. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Which means that, yeah, with the universal access right now, pending a specification for that workbench, I'm going to try to see if I can get uh, Lashlo to, to start working on that, to start implementing the workbench. That would be good. He's kind of disappeared for some time, but I'll try to pull him back in. Okay. So let's move on. Um, we're close to the to the hour here. So that's that's great progress. So that means uh, come August twenty fifth. I mean, well, let's see. What what do I want to do? Like to follow up on what you have just showed, Oliver. I want to just build that um, that sensor. I want to try to do it without the the ramps on top if we don't need it. Uh, would you mind just drawing some of the diagram of what you've done? And can you can you draw that up so I can yes. just wire it up and and make it happen here? Yes, of course, that's uh, what I'm next doing. Until okay. yesterday I was doing the thing itself, but uh, now I'm going some documenting things uh, uh, that you will be able to reproduce this thing very quickly. I mean, it's just made from standard components that uh, should it make it way easier. And um, yeah, and I'm doing the document documentation on that immediately. 
And um, concerning the, the time scheduling, um, um, yeah, you can start immediately repu rep reproducing that. And uh, yes. concerning the, uh, pr uh, the the printed thing, the the the, um, um, the, the SMD version, or um, uh, with the, with the cap sensing. Uh, uh, Ability. The latest news is that uh, today I've gotten the um, parts from Mauser, which I have ordered a few days ago. But there's just one drawback uh, on Mauser: there was not the AD7747 soon available. It is available in general, but uh, they have long, long delivery uh, periods uh, of several weeks. So I uh, uh, took that from another source like, like eBay and um, I've ordered it and hope it will reach me at about 27 or 28 of uh, June. So, um, but however, we have the manual thing and are on the safe side okay. and uh, the other thing we, we, we will see, but right. um, okay. yeah, and uh, yeah. Sorry, which is, which part was it that just was taking a long time? Uh, the main processor, the AD7747 okay. would take a long time if you order it directly from Mauser. And the point is I've completed the uh, list from Abraham and we have now on Mauser on this project a complete yeah, project file which uh, for example, if I want to have three of them, I, I can order three times this project and then I get it. But in this project list, I have for this time and this order the AD uh, processor for this reason out because I didn't want it order on Mauser and waiting so long, but better ordering it uh, from, from another source. So uh, one, one have to add, add this, or I have to add this in the BOM that uh, if you order it, then you must order this thing separately, or I put it back again into the project list, but uh, make a mark that they will have uh, long long delivery periods, something, okay. something like this. Uh, and that may be the case because you're in Europe, maybe for the United States it'll be much quicker, or no? Yeah, I don't know. That. Yeah. But I think um, um, Mauser will will get such things maybe also from the United States. No, I'm not. I'm not sure okay. about it. All right. Yeah. But it was also not a problem to get this from from uh, eBay sooner. It was just had, uh, just a few few euros more expensive. Uh, yeah. Okay. Great. Um, yeah. If you wouldn't mind, put a link. I don't see that link to the um, ordering. Is or is that there on your log yeah. already? Uh, sorry, what? Again, um, is that ordering link? Are you talking about? Oh yes. Yeah, so, do you I have know. that link on your yeah. log yet? Yeah. No, you are showing. You are showing the ordering link for the PCB at Eisler. That's a different thing. I'm now talking about all the electronics yeah. parts from Mauser.com. Right. Com. right. And, Which you don't um, have on. That's not on the log yet. I haven't yet. Um, okay. I haven't yet updated my my log and my timesheets. Okay. It. Uh, I, I I will do it. I will do it later. Meaning I will do a complete documentation with BOM and with all those links. And for now, it was just the news that the Mauser Mauser parts already have received today. I haven't yet looked into the packet. I hope everything is complete. But so far, we are on the good way concerning this. Excellent, excellent. Uh, thank you so much. That's great work and yeah, great documentation. Your video is very nice. It just showed what's happening there. That's pretty good. Um, thank you. Chaz, do you have anything Thanks. to add? Yeah, yeah, really good. Um, anything to add to that still? I, I think it looks like you did this diagram on the, in a working document on the universal controller. Um, I just did a bit of wiring diagram. Um, yeah. I've still been busy with work. Mm -hmm, um, mm -hmm. Next thing to do, though, is the FreeCAD um, documentation. Yeah. I have found like the Arduino ramps, TB6600, um, CAD files off of like Thingiverse for that. Uh -huh. I've got to find or develop cat, a CAT5 coupler, CAT5 splitter, and wiring plugs to do the FreeCAD. Awesome. I should have time for that um, tomorrow. I had the day off. Um, so I can get to that tomorrow. 
Um, okay. So that would be working on the FreeCAD. And then um, I need to review a bit more of what Oliver's done. Because um, it looks like he's already um, wired up the TB6600 and ramps board. Yeah. So I need to like look up his documentation. Um, and it seemed like he was, I'm not sure, but it seemed like he was going to be doing like the wiring in like KiCad or something. Um, or would I be doing that? Let's see. In KiCad, no, I, I don't know if we have to do that. He's got the board itself as far as the... Yeah, I was going to ask Oliver do, if we want to do any more professional wiring diagrams than Google Google Documents. Is there anything to do there? or I don't know. I think we're okay just with the diagrams on the Google Documents. That's probably good enough. Okay. Yeah. Unless you uh, have... You're referring um, to his or to the ones I post for the wiring diagrams? Uh, either place just... Uh, let's see what's a more sensible place um, universal controller we can keep it there because that's the universal controller and as far as his is more related to the torch table so both both are quite related you can go where where you are right now that's good okay so then yeah next steps would be for me to like um, do some free CAD work yeah assembling the points and um, once I've got some of those assembled then I would have to design like a cat 5 Looks like unless you are aware of um, where I could find uh, the Cat5 coupler, Cat5 splitter, and wiring plug um, no. CAD files. I haven't looked at that, so you'd have to you'd have to look for that. Um, yeah. Mm-hmm. Yep. Then, yeah, next step would be for me to do some pre-CAD work. Yep. That sounds good. Excellent. Um, so let's continue here. Let's move then right into, let's see, extruder, filament maker. So let's see, Dixon we have, and let's see, are we, are we expecting also, oh, Abe, is Abe planning on, I don't know if you know Dixon, okay, Dixon is disappearing, and Abe, <clears throat> Abe and Dixon are on, uh, on a filament maker team. Let, let's see if we can trace any work from them. Um, let's look at Dixon log and a blog. Lyman film extruder part library. So we've been working on organizing all the parts so we can actually get all the CAD going. Basically taking all the parts from the part library to do a full CAD design of the of the extruder and that's that's quite a bit of, of a more complex project since in the part library so we're trying to build this machine here but in the part library there's a we have all the parts like that are for 3d printing but we don't know how they go together uh, that's one of the things we're figuring out uh, but probably someone just has to start looking at the parts and seeing if like a jigsaw puzzle, they actually fit into the actual machine. Um, but we really need Abe and uh, Dixon to fill us in on the on that discussion. Dixon, can you um, can you fill us in a little more on on where we are there? Yeah. So so what I um, last week I, I finished adding the entries to the part library, and then I started tracing out some of the STL files, just because I wasn't using I wasn't at home. Uh, yeah. I wasn't using my main computer, and it wasn't as powerful. I was planning on kind of building some assemblies so that I could figure out um, which parts are used. Because in the construction manual, he says that only 20 of the printed parts are used of the 60 mm. some odd parts that are in there. Um, but some of them are optional variations. I see. Which is why I uploaded all of them before I figured it out because I, they're still part, part of the part of the thing. Yeah. Know? But I haven't figured out what parts constitute the base, like the basic yeah. project, if you know what I mean. Yeah. That you benefit from. Yeah. So my plan this week is, since I have access to my computer with lots of RAM again, um, I'm not going to trace the files yet, but I am going to put them together into yeah. assemblies so I can get the idea of, of what parts go with 
which one so I can identify the core parts um, and then trace just those to start with so that we can get going on some of that stuff. Yeah, um, sounds... And then if the other parts need to get traced, then we'll do those at a later date. Okay, sounds like a good program. Uh, so so the, I guess some of the hints are just taking a look at some of the pictures. So for example, like we look at this picture here that I'm showing on my screen and uh, play a little detective work. But right here we're already seeing, okay, there's that hopper, there's this chute, there's like these, uh, I saw them in a the library, like these pieces which are all printed individually. Like you see these sections. So there's like a section here, another here, another there, another there. There's like this base mount, like four pieces there. So I could count like four, eight, nine, ten. I could count ten right there already. So maybe the approach would be to go the grossest, grossest from the outside in. Uh, you know, say you can identify the ten pieces in here. Start with that, and then see like, okay, what are all, what else am I gonna need in here? Or is that all I need? <laughs> and then just kind of keep going right. through that. Maybe, I mean, maybe that's like almost all there is, and then there's a bunch of, there's 10 parts already here. Maybe there's like 10 more for the filament winder. So yeah, just kind of like look at a picture and then try to piece together a few parts that that constitute that picture. Um, have you been in touch with Abe and Cassie on that? Uh, Abe is not here right now. Um, um, yeah, I've, I've talked to... Abe and I have traded some points on the on the network. Uh, mm -hmm. Talked to Cassie about um, her work on the spooler, and uh, she's she's she was saying that she started to um, build placeholders for the non-printed parts that just map out the extents. Um, the first one took a while, but she says that she's um, gotten a workflow down. Okay. She's making good progress there. Okay. Um, but I'm gonna I'm gonna try and coordinate with Abe a little more closely this week, um, so that we can get two eyes on sorting out those parts that we were just talking about doing. Yeah. Okay. That sounds pretty good. So do you have everything you need to to keep going? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Okay. Yeah, I think as soon as I get the parts sorted out, I'm gonna try and do a build of one of these as soon as possible. So hopefully I can get that done soon but I don't think I need I think we probably uh, have all the people and things we need to keep going on this okay uh, as far as doing the build I mean what are your thoughts on that do you have a place to 3d print the parts um, yeah yeah I, I should so a friend of mine is an engineering student at the University of Utah so we're planning on on using their uh, library 3D printers because his 3D printer is only an 8x8 bet and we need another inch. So I should be able to get that done locally. Oh, I see. There are some parts here that require 9 inches. Yeah, um, he says, sorry, I don't have the construction manual open, but I think he says that it's the parts are intended to be cut on a 9 by or printed, sorry, on a 9 by 7 printer. Oh, I really? I think is the minimum size. Oh, okay. Okay. If I'm mistaken, I do have access to an 8x8 eight eight directly. Uh-huh. Yeah, if it's more than 8x8, eight eight, then um, I would need to add the 12-inch bed here. I don't have 12-inch beds. All the beds I have for the D3Ds were so far 8 inches. So, But yeah, as soon as you have that, I mean, shoot those files, you know, keep communicating here because I want to start printing that myself and, and uh, prototype that away, and then we can put together all the remaining instructions for all the other pieces. Yeah, yeah. Uh, that would be good. Yeah, so I'll, I'll put together the minimum printed parts you need. Right, yeah. That's interesting. Excellent, excellent. Mm, let's see, is there anything else we can cover right now? So for the people that are here, um, I think that kind of covers, covers um, most of what we have. And... Um, Let's see, Joseph, any any updates on community development and instructionals you, that you want to pipe into or while we have the crowd? Can you hear me? Yeah, yep. Um, I'm just going to be shooting out the updated onboarding stuff in a day or two, all that. I think it will be pretty tidy. Um, and then it'll just be a question of 
of completing some of the, the help links and getting everybody on board using um, using our current FreeCAD 101 page as a repository of any help videos we're sharing with each other. Okay. That's, um, yeah. Mm -hmm. and, so I just started to set up, I, I sort of started moving some of the test items to a developer test page. Um, and then uh, basically setting out, just identifying the tasks that most of us are working on and making those um, headings on the FreeCAD page so that I can just go to the FreeCAD 101 page and look at all of our file simplification tools or um, the stuff that Roberto's doing or extracting isometric views and all of that. I thought we could just use that as a junk drawer until we get far enough along to you know worry about a forum. Yeah, yeah. No, that's that's all good. I think that's good. Mm -hmm. That's it. That's it. That's it. Okay. Well, I think that that sums up the meeting for today. Then, so so yeah, we've got a lot of good progress happening on all the different fronts, from CNC circuit mill to the 3D printer, to the torch table. And um, what I'll keep, continue doing here is working on a print cluster. So make make a few more machines. I can start printing parts if we can get that simplification. We can print parts for everybody as, to to start building their own printer. Like in a super low cost version, it's only around like a hundred bucks that you can possibly get a 3D printer built for. Um, so we'll continue working on on that. But as far as otherwise, I'll be working with the metal frames here putting together a bunch more machines so I can get to the printing. Uh, besides that, um, yeah, I think things are going really well. We're looking forward to having a bunch of more people from the Mideast region join on the team. That's that's pretty exciting to get, get uh, towards completion on a 3D printer and then start on the tractor work. And then, of course, start cutting our own metal here with a torch table for all the runs that we do, which we're definitely going to need for the tractor because there's a lot of cutting there. So, other than that, I think that's that's go team go uh, keep going we'll continue with the next meeting same time next tuesday so 1 p.m and uh i think we'll talk to you right there unless there's any other last last words all right sounds good everybody so thanks a lot uh we'll keep this keep this shorter rather than longer excellent Thanks a lot, everybody, and we'll see you next week. Bye-bye.